We increase the district assembly's common fund back from 5% to 7.5. It means that the share that goes to disabled persons will also increase proportionately. But the, but the good news is that the problem has normally been with disbursement of the fund. The district chief executives and metropolitan chief executives do not prioritize the disbursement of the disability fund. And so we are going to create a fund which will be separate from the D district assembly's common fund. When the district assembly's common fund comes, the share of the disabled will be paid into a special account. All right, so that is uh, the uh, presidential uh, nominee of the NDC. Uh, he's been touring the Upper West region. Let's go to Zoom now and, and speak to Alexander Bankole Williams. He's the chairman of the Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations. Uh, Mr. Bankole Williams, good evening. Thank you for your time. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Right, uh, as, as persons... Just to correct that, I'm actually the chairman of the National Advocacy Committee. National Advocacy Committee. Yes, okay. of the Federation. All right, yeah. So, I mean, clearly the, the concern uh, from the former president is the fact that uh, disbursement has been a challenge. And so if there's disbursement, which is a challenge, does increasing the fund solve that problem from where you sit? Okay, so uh, indeed, when you look at the common fund, hello, Mr. Bankoli. Hello, Mr. Bankoli. Fact that uh, the need. To... Yes. Yes. Go on. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. yes sir. Given the fact that the idea that informed the commencement of the common fund was a work on uh, Ghana's uh, poverty reduction strategy program that advised that persons within the vulnerable group categories should be given some support mechanisms mm. to alleviate their, uh, their level of poverty. Mm. And uh, given the fact that since this was started in 2005, districts have actually by far and large uh, been mostly reluctant to disperse the funds in accordance with government's directive, mm. you would indicate that a part of the problem have always been the issue of appropriate disbursement or adequate disbursement right. of the fund. And that will not be that will not be solved mm. by uh, actually increasing the fund. But that is not the only problem that the fund has had. Mm. In fact, if you ask uh, most persons with disabilities. Right. Uh, the complaint would be that the fund has not been in that they want to do. Uh, before 2018, the model that was used was for the persons with disabilities to actually apply for the fund. Mm -hmm. And then they are giving the physical cash to go and do what they wanted to do. The problem that arose as a result of that was the fact that, one, they were actually not giving the amount requested. So the individual requested 3000 or 5000 mm -hmm. The individual could actually end up getting about 2000 200 or 300 cities, which was nowhere near necessary for what they wanted to do. Okay. And then, the, the, um, uh, just just uh, just a moment, and I will add. Mm -hmm. And then, in recent times, the system was improved to say instead of giving the individual the, the fiscal cash, we will procure the item for the person. Okay. But all these have been developed, uh, been bedeviled with several challenges. And okay. so, yes, increasing the fund will solve some problem, but it will not solve all the problems. The entire around. problem. Okay. Look the, at the former president is the former president is uh, uh, promising to separate the district assembly's common fund from 
the um, the disability organizations uh, a special fund. There's going to be a fund, the, the District Assembly Common Fund, from the Federation of Disability Organizations. He says that the disability fund is going to solely cater for your uh, needs. Do you think that if there is an existing problem of disbursement, separating the fund from the, the, the district assemblies one could solve the problem? Yeah, okay, so just before I go on to the second part of your question, let me still do with the common fund and disbursement to indicate that the common fund serves a particular purpose currently. And by far and large, it overall seeks to build the economic empowerment of persons with disability, right. to make them independent and earn a decent living. And that idea ought to be continued. However, a, a, a challenge the Federation raised from May this year as a result of the happenings around COVID-19 is the fact that there are persons with disabilities who are not gainfully employed who are unable to access the common fund mm -hmm. because the common fund itself is not that regular mm -hmm. and it also has a great number of people to deal with. Mm -hmm. Our solution to that was for the government of Ghana to begin to consider the, the, the situation of actually establishing a fund that gives persons with disabilities that are unemployed mm -hmm. some stipends at the end of each month as is done in South Africa and, and some other developed So countries. the promise of separation so would, that not, idea, would not resolve the, challenge, the, the current challenge that you have. Is that, a, is that what you're saying? Uh, not, not at all. It will, uh, separating the, the, the new fund from the existing common fund mm. will not solve the existing challenges with a common fund. Okay. Because their common funds issue has to do with, there are two things. One, as the former president rightly pointed out, the fund itself is inadequate. Mm -hmm. And two, disbursement ought to be better regu and, uh, regulated okay. so that the fund is able to meet its target. But I'm saying, in addition to that, the former president has raised an important issue which ought to be considered by any government from January 2021, mm -hmm. which is the need to establish a fund that would seek to um, uh, give some monthly stipends to persons with disabilities that are unemployed. Other countries have been doing it for quite some years now. And okay. I think it is time Ghana also adopts that. But you know, Mr. Bankole, you know yes. that as a country, we have a challenge with database. So if even as a nation, we are unable to tell specifically uh, the number of persons uh, with disability. We are just told that it's between 15% of the entire Ghanaian population are uh, persons living with disability. That 15%, do you have members counted? You know where they live, that they can access these funds. There's a possibility people could front and then the monies won't go to the right uh, uh, people. Do you not agree? Okay, so I agree there are a lot of things that have to be done for the implementation of such a fund to be successful. Mm. And when you check Section 9 of the Persons mm. with Disabilities Act, Act 715, as well as Section 45 of Ghana's Labor Act, Act mm. 651, it clearly indicates that the government needs to take the data of persons with disabilities that require employment. Okay. You would realize that if indeed these sections I have so quoted are successfully implemented. We will have to collect ample data on persons with disabilities that fall within the unemployment category mm. so that funds will be disbursed to these individuals mm -hmm. for so long as they remain unemployed. Mm. But you see, in countries where these stipends have, uh, these monthly stipends for persons with disabilities have been uh, implemented. Mm -hmm. The challenge these countries have also had is the situation where one, the government on one hand is actually uh, likely to simply sit back 
and relax because they will say we have we are giving some persons with abilities who are unemployed some form of income and that is okay yeah. and to the situation where persons with disabilities who are unemployed getting these stipends might also tend to relax on actually mm. looking for employment okay it is therefore important that even when such a fund is established and the, the, the disbursement of stipends commences, government will make ample effort to ensure that the persons with disabilities that they have on their database as mm. unemployed. Okay. Measures will be put in place to get them into formal or informal work settings. That would cause these people to earn a living mm. because persons with disabilities ought to live dignifying lives in a meaningful manner. Right. My final question to you uh, regarding this will be, from your submission, you've uh, repeated the word that funds should be made accessible and available to persons with disability who are unemployed. How about persons with disability who are currently employed? Uh, from your submission, you do not think that they should benefit from this uh, uh, fund? Uh, uh, again, uh, referring to the former president, he indicates that the fund to be set up would serve two purposes. 50% would go into monthly stipends for persons with disabilities, and 50% would be invested in the ventures of persons with disabilities. What this means, uh, what this means to me is that, for instance, persons with disabilities that are employed, for instance, in the informal sector mm -hmm. would actually be able to access and this funds to boost their businesses or their various forms of employment in the informal sector. Right. And even those who are employed in the formal sector, that require extra support to purchase assistive technological devices among others, hmm. could also tap into this fund. But I would want to add that uh, whichever government that is in power from January 2021 should take this up seriously, right. and we should consider having the National Council on Persons with Disabilities Mm. as well as SNATE manage this fund so as to make it sustainable and regular for the intended purpose. Okay. Thank you so much for your time this evening, uh, Alexander William uh, Bankole is the chairman for the National Advocacy Committee, Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations. This is still News at 10 on TV3. Stay with us. When we return, we have some more political stories for you. The vice president himself has also been campaigning. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with TV3. This is News at 10. We are staying with politics. The General Secretary of the Opposition National Democratic Congress is facing of allegations made by the ruling NPP that he orchestrated the busing of some Ivorians into the country to be registered at the just-ended registration exercise. An angry Johnson Esedun Ketia speaking at the headquarters of the party dared the government to cause his arrest and prosecution if they have any evidence. It's a report by Kamala Kruche. Peace walk, peace dance, peace uh, crawling, peace the Peace no enye. Wow, ya enji wa wa niji peace in kasa. Ni brenye. This is the evidence. I would defer. A visibly angry NDC chief scribe venting his outrage at the ruling party for what he describes as an attempt to change the truth and fact in a fight back after the MPP weeks ago had alleged he schemed the influx of non Ghanaians to be registered. They promised to investigate and publish their findings whilst punishing anybody involved in the wrongdoing. And I can tell you that nobody has contacted me to give any evidence at any investigation. It tells you that the EC itself knows the truth. After waiting 27 clear days for action on this urgent matter, very little or no action appears to have been taken by way of serving the cause of justice. <laughs>
as a leaked voice purported to be that of the, the deputy Bono East regional minister Martin Otijako ostensibly telling MPP supporters to visit mayhem on NDC supporters and orchestrate election more practices. The general secretary further adduced evidence of the NPP parliamentary candidate for the Banda constituency, Joe Dankwa, whose brother was arrested holding arms by the migration and police yet no action was taken against him political clashes at banda hinkro on july 13 2020 between the ndc and mpp over the exercise could not be controlled escalating into gunshots burning of cars and roadblocks ask john Boadu and his mpp did they lodge any complaint at the police station and secondly i'm telling you on authority on the 6th of August 2020, the regional Bono Regional Police Commander was at Cabrono Registration Center to supervise the registration of the Avorians. The district police were there. The military command were at the Cabrono Regional Cabrono Registration Center. The National Security Bono Region were there. The BNI were there. The MPP regional chairman, Chairman Abronje, was there. The Bono Regional Police Command on July 21, 2020 announced the arrest of seven suspects believed to be involved in the killing of the 28-year-old teacher trainee graduate. Let's reason beyond certain things and let's behave as wise people that nobody can fan fool. Don't gloss over evidence lie. When the truth is there and you are preparing to be lied to, it is there and when that the fools will take you to be a fool and they'll be lying to you. So let's be clear on this matter and let's call a spade, spade. Just For the NDC chief scribe, he had taken much time to gather further evidence to expose the president's grand scheme of rigging the elections. On his recent tour of the voter region, instead of using the opportunity to apologize for his unwarranted ethnic discrimination against the voterians, he claimed ignorance of all the bad things enumerated above and stated rather shamelessly that he has no evil agenda against the Votarian. We're staying on politics. This time around, we are switching to the camp of the NPP. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has appealed to the people of the northern region to consider the peace being enjoyed in Dagbong and massively vote for the NPP on December 7. Addressing a gathering of chiefs and people of Yendi, Dr. Baumia noted it took a selfless leader like President Akufuado to restore the peace in Dagbon. The vice president is on a four-day tour of the northern region. His first port of call was at the Bewa Palace. Dr. Baumia said the people of Dagbon are indebted to the MPP government for the peace restored in the area. The Dagbon people, the northern people, the Ghanaians as well, are indebted to Nana Kofuado for bringing peace to Dagbon. And once you owe somebody a debt, you should pay it. And Nana Dodago Akufuado, inshallah, the people of Gabon will pay that debt on December 7th by voting massively for him uh, and the MPP government. He hinted the next MPP government will upgrade the Pung Tamali Veterinary School to an agricultural university. In a speech read on his behalf, the king of Dagban, Yana Abubakari, the second expressed gratitude to government for the development in Dagban. He called on the ruling and opposition parties to ensure a clean campaign ahead of the December polls. I the sentiment of all the good people of Ghana that the government should ensure that the 2020 election is conducted in an atmosphere of calmness and tranquility. The vice president later visited the palace of the Mion Lana and Yona. He is suspected to visit Tatali, Zabzugu and Cheraponi before his tour of the region ends. This is still news at 10 on TV3. Let's look at some of the major stories making headlines uh, just before we bounce out of the studio. Now, the Ghana National Council of Private Schools say none of their members received disbursement under the special relief package for SMEs affected by the coronavirus pandemic. 
presenting a petition to the presidency in Accra, the executive director in Okjentua said teachers and owners of private schools are bearing the brunt of the pandemic coupled with threats of court action by unpaid teachers. The Ghana Health Service has shut down calls for a review of the $150 mandatory charge for COVID-19 tests at the Kotoka International Airport. Some individuals and groups have argued that the amount is expensive and could demotivate some stranded Ghanaians abroad from returning home. But the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kumabwaji, says such calls are not justified. And still, the, the, still on the issue, Dr. Um, Kumar Bwaji, who is the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, says senior high schools have not recorded any COVID-19 positive cases yet, and those who have not can vacate and allow students to go home after their final WASI papers. According to him, schools which have positive cases by the end of the exam would have to assess before students are allowed to go home. And the international front story we have for you this evening, uh, going straight to the United States of America, Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden has met the family of a black man shot in the back by police on a visit to Kenosha, Wisconsin. They held private talks with Mr. Biden and landed, uh, when he landed in the state. The city is recovering after some time, uh, some time violent protest over Jacob Black's shooting and the state is a key area in November's presidential elections. That's how we bring the bulletin to a close. Thank you very much for watching. If you visit 3news.com, there are some more stories there for you tonight. Do have a good evening and as always, stay positive. I am Martin Asiedu Datta.